days. This is going to, so today is the 10th. Sunday after Pentecost. We'll be back here in, in the Ridgefield and Danbury. And uh, back from a, a trip to uh, short last Sunday was in uh, visiting Dublin and Glasgow. We're trying to get priests uh, to help us uh, put together the um, the apostolate in in, uh, in in Europe. And so there's another priest who is going to be helping us and hopefully we'll pay a visit here to America. Uh, Father Iglesias, a Spanish priest who was um, ordained in the Novus Ordo and then was conditionally reordained by Bishop Williamson a couple of weeks ago. And then uh, is a very, seems very strong and uh, so hopefully you're paying a visit to us in the next couple of months. And then also um, another priest who is uh, still deciding, two other priests still deciding as to what they will do as far as, uh, you know, they want to stand up against the liberalism in society and hoping soon to be able to stand up and uh, uh, take care of people, particularly in Germany and in England and uh, Denmark and uh, uh, in uh, 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 Belgium. And so uh, also said that in Australia, the priest has joined us who is going to be helping us a priest also is conditionally ordained, who was a priest for the Novus Ordo, and uh, who is uh, going to be helping some of our people there, at least in the beginning, in limited capacity, and then hopefully later on more so. So more priests are slowly joining the resistance movement. We're just asking for uh, more priests to be in the movement in such a way as to help uh, with the apostolate, that is, with the traveling and with the missionary uh, side of, the, uh, of this resistance which is necessary as it was back in the 70s. We, got a, we need priests that are going on the circuit as we used to do in the old days. Now many of the priests, as they are willing to stand up against the liberalism or modernism of the society, are yet less willing to participate in the circuit and participate in the, um, in the uh, missionary side. And so there's hopefully more priests will join us in that side of the mission. But the epistle for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians chapter 12. Brethren, you know that when you were Gentiles, you went to dumb idols according as you were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God says anathema to Jesus. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Ghost. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries, but the same Lord. There are varieties of workings, but the same God, who works all things in all. Now the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone for profit. To one through the Spirit is given the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith in the same Spirit, to another the gift of healing in the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these things are the work of one and the same Spirit, who will out to everyone according to his will. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke, chapter 18. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted themselves in themselves as being just and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and began to pray thus within himself, O God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of men, robbers, dishonest, adulterers, or even like this publican. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I possess. But the publican, standing afar off, would not so much as lift up his ears to heaven, but kept striking his breast, saying, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went back to his home justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself shall be humbled, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Going to the and some of the ghost, amen. Today are a few considerations on the spirit behind our actions. You know that we know that 
Man has a body, and we can see the things that we do in our body. We move our arms, we move our feet, we move our tongue. And yet when we see these things, and we hear words coming from the mouth, we know that there is something behind it. Something that makes us do the motions with our hands, the motions with our arms, the motions with our body. That there is a soul or a spirit behind it. And we know that this spirit has gone at death. Death is when this spirit leaves. When a man dies, the soul separates from the body. And that body then is no longer able to do any of the actions that it did before. But we don't see the soul. We see its effects. We know the soul is real, more real than the body. And that the soul is necessary, more necessary than the body. The spirit is more real than the flesh. And this is true of all things. All things that God has created, the spirit is more real than the flesh. The nature is more real than the extension of that nature. And so we see inside of a man that he has a heart and a soul and a mind. And this mind is exp expresses itself, its truth, and it understands in its tongue and in its writing. And what is in our minds and hearts comes out in our actions. But we see with our eyes the actions. But there is also a spirit behind the spirit. And these are two spirits. St. Ignatius has rules about these spirits. It says we must discern the spirits. Well, there are two spirits. There is a spirit that comes from God, which is the spirit of the good angel. And the spirit that comes from the Holy Ghost. And the spirit that moves us in the direction towards God. And then there is another spirit, the spirit that moves us in the direction towards damnation. Now these spirits are not just individual. These spirits don't just work in an individual manner. They neither of these spirits. We know that the Spirit of God worketh for the salvation of all souls. We know that the Spirit of God worketh for the spreading of the kingship of Christ throughout the whole world. We know the Spirit of God puts a spirit of warfare, a spirit of combat inside of those who follow Him so that our, our St. Paul tells us we are fighters. Fighters against, uh, not against flesh and blood, but against the prince of darkness and the spirits in high places. We are fighters against wicked spirits, fighters for the true spirit, and fighters going to bring all the entire world under the domain of Jesus Christ. So there is a spirit inside of me, my soul, but there is a spirit behind the spirit. And in the Gospel and Epistle today, we see fools. Fools. Two fools. One fool who is a follower of the devil. Another fool who is a follower of God. The fool that is a follower of the devil, he is like most modern fools. And he is one who says, he, who thinks he stands, let him take heed lest he fall. That is the man that believes he stands on his own feet. That's the principle of America. The principle of self-sufficiency. The principle that we are all able to stand on our own feet. And we don't need the help of anyone else. The principle of the modern world. That a man is independent, and a man doesn't need another man, and a man doesn't need a government, and a man doesn't need a God, and a man doesn't need nature, and a man doesn't need anything outside of himself. That you are your own man, and this is the foolishness of the wicked, that is the small wicked, the great wicked do not fall for this foolishness, but the lower levels of the wicked, they fall for this foolishness. That a man can stand on his own two feet, and has confidence in himself. And then there is the foolishness of the man that follows God. And he is the public, the, public, the, uh, the Pharisee that prays in the church in the gospel today. O oh Lord, I thank Thee that I am not like the rest of men. He has the same problem. He is not different than the wicked man. St. Augustine says, Should he not say, I am not like most of men? That there are many men worse than me? But the, the Pharisee is so wicked that he doesn't even say that, says St. Augustine. The Pharisee says, I am not like the rest of men, which means there is no man on earth that is like unto me. And he considers his own goodness, which he believes is standing upon himself. In fact, the selfish average sinner and this selfish so-called saint, they are sons of the devil, and they are not different one from another. Well, they are not very much different. They both think they stand upon themselves. And they don't recognize that there are spirits. 
that there are angels, and that there are billions of angels, and that these angels move in this world. And some of these angels move towards God, and others of these angels move towards hell. And both of these angels are warriors, and both of these angels work in cohort with other angels. And both of them work in an ordered manner towards a real goal, which is to spread the kingdom of Christ, or to spread the kingdom of Satan, to prepare for the coming of Christ, who is going to come to judge them in the world, or to prepare for the coming of the Antichrist. There are two spirits working behind everything. And when you open your eyes and look at the TV, and look at the movies, and look at the government, and look at all the different parts of the world, you will see today that there is the spirit of Satan behind it. The spirit of Satan. And it is in every detail of our world. It was just pointed out to me just only last night, one of the many examples of this. You see Walt Disney. And Walt Disney's handwriting, when he writes out Walt Disney, you find in the writing of Walt Disney, six and six and six. Six, six, six. And you find also in Walt Disney, in the Lion King, for instance, when you have a, a when the lion is laying on top, it says sex across the screen. In Aladdin, they tell the good, the good teenagers, take off your clothes. And the little son, you can hear it in perfect English, said low voice by, uh, you know, the, the idiot voice behind uh, the... the, the um, but in any case, that you, the, you know, so many other examples. That when you look under the innocence of Walt Disney, and you look in the news, and you look in the world around us, there is a spirit behind the spirits. There is a spirit behind what is going on, and it is a preparation. There is a preparation of the spirit of hell for the coming of the Antichrist. There is a preparation of the spirit of God for the coming of Christ to judge the living and the dead, and the coming of the victory of Mary. And we cannot believe that we stand alone. And we are fools if we think we stand alone. We are fools if we think we can stand upon our own two feet. We are, we are members, we are soldiers, little peons in a great war, as St. Augustine tells us. The war between two loves. The two loves have built two cities. The love of God leading to the despising of self which built the city of God and the love of self leading to the despising of God which built the city of pandemonium or the city of hell. And it was built by the greatest, most selfish lover in the world and that was Lucifer. And he was the one that founded that city of self-love. And he could, he could get built the kingdom of self-love. As John Milton puts into the words of Lucifer, I would rather reign in hell where I am in charge of myself, than serve in heaven. I would rather reign in hell in eternal damnation and misery without any respite of agony than serve in happiness in heaven. And this is the battle. And those who want to reign for themselves, they cannot reign as Lucifer reigns. The only way to do it is to put themselves under his dominion. And we find this is happening everywhere in the world today, whether it be the movie actors, or whether it be the men in government, or whether it be any of the important and wealthy men throughout the world, each of them at the highest levels always puts themselves directly under the satanic spirit. They know what they are doing. And at the lower levels, they are little pawns, little peons in the game between heaven and hell, and the war between heaven and hell. And right now, hell rules throughout the entirety of the world. And there is a, we are getting closer and closer to the arrival of the Antichrist. We're getting closer and closer to the complete victory of the devil. And this victory will never come. Because the Blessed Virgin Mary will destroy him. And he knows that he shall be destroyed. And he knows that his time is coming to an end. And therefore, there is an increase of wickedness in our times. Because the devil knows that his time is running out. He knows that he is defeated. But therefore, he is, but he is still pushing and pushing and pushing in order to spread his kingdom. And we cannot think in foolish ways as modern man. Cannot think that things are getting better. They are not getting better. Remember the warning of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he said, in these times, they will say, peace, peace. 
but there is no peace. There are other times in history where they say peace, but there is peace, at least some peace. But in the end times, they will say, peace, peace, but there is no peace. And this will not only be the peace of nations. For instance, is America in the state of peace? If it's in the state of peace, then why do you have to have security systems? If it's in the state of peace, then why are you afraid to go to the Bronx? If it's in the state of peace, then why are there millions and millions of babies being killed every day? And don't limit yourself to those that are aborted in abortion clinics. That's only a small percentage of the babies that are killed. A very small percentage. An average woman probably has 30 different abortions during her life because of the use of the contraceptive pills. That baby is conceived and aborted. Another baby is conceived and aborted. And they are real babies. And they can't even know until they die and go to hell how many babies they have killed of their own. They don't even know. They might know about the two or three or four abortions that they had, but they, may, they do not know about all of the abortions through the contraceptive pills. All those babies that have been murdered. Only a small percentage make the abortion register. There are millions of babies. And we read about the old days. And it is said in the olden times, back when man was not nice, that Satan always demanded the sacrifice of babies because he wanted innocent blood. He demanded the sacrifice of babies. In all the corrupt and pagan cultures, there is a sacrifice of babies. It is always the case. Hindus used to take their babies and take them up to the top of their temple and in honor of the gods, they would take the babies and they would throw them off the temple onto the ground and smash them. They were the nice ones. Others used to eat the babies and burn the babies. The murdering of babies is one of the essential signs of the depth of the presence of Satan in our culture. He is being worshipped and there is a sacrifice. The sacrifice of blood to the altar of Satan. And this is being done by our women throughout the world. These women are not ready to accept Jesus Christ. They are not ready to be converted. They have given themselves over to Satan. And many of them don't even know it. Though they know they are wicked by their wicked lives and their wicked ways. We must recognize that in our present conflict between the Spirit of God and the Spirit of hell, we are not fighting between a couple modernists in Rome and a few traditionalists that are holding the Catholic faith. We are fighting the entirety of the world which is in the hands of Lucifer. Our Lord Jesus Christ said 2,000 years ago that He was the Prince of this world. And that was in the days in which He had more power and more, more than, he, than He is showing in the world today. That God had more power. The people were not as wicked as they are today. Today they are more wicked than they have ever been in the history of the world. And we must remember that modern man, including these pious people that go to the modern churches, they go to the modern churches, why? To placate their consciences. They do not go to the churches in order to worship God. They go to placate their consciences because when they look inside of themselves, they know that they are not good because they feel the cry of those whom they have aborted. They know that their houses are empty, but they think they are empty because there are no children in it. But they do not realize their houses are empty because there is no God in their house. Look at all the houses that we have in America. All these big houses and all over the world, all these houses, but they don't have children in them because they have aborted their own children. There has been a holocaust of the murdering of our own people and the consequence will be the death of ourselves. The example also is in sacred scripture today. St. John Chrysostom talks about it in his sermon today. He says, there is, it is one thing to sin says so St. John Chrysostom in a sermon for this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. It is one thing to sin. It is another to sin in companionship with others. It is one thing to sin alone. For this was the sin of Achab. Achab was a wicked king. 
But he did his wickedness himself. But it is another to arrange the sin. It is another to organize the sin. It is another to make sure that we have sin. And this is the sin of Jezebel. And we read about Jezebel's death today in sacred scripture in the book of Kings in our holy bravery. Jezebel stood up on top of the house while the king Jehu came to visit. My cab had already been dead seven years. And she adorned herself. And she went up to the second floor and put on the beautiful stones and made up her face. And King Jehu came into the city and she stood up and said, Are there any hope for the sons of Zambri? He looked up and said, Who is that? What is that? And they told her, That is Jezebel. And he said, Go and throw her down. And they went up and threw her down. And her blood filled the wall and she landed on the ground. And then he went to eat his dinner. And Jehu was eating his dinner and he said, You know, go and bury that woman, that wicked woman, because she was the daughter of a king. And therefore you should at least bury her. And so they went out. This is only maybe 40 minutes or an hour later. And they went out and they said, We cannot find her body, for only her skull, her hands, and her feet remain. But the rest is gone. And they went back to Jehu and Jehu said, Yes, it is the word of God. For God spoke to her and said to the prophet Elias, that she, the dog shall lick up her blood, and she shall be dragged into the field of Jezreel. And the Jezreel means there will be blood. One of the curses that God made upon the Jewish people was that there would be a Jezreel, that there would be the one who will be blood, and she will be dragged out of the city of Jezreel, and they're dragged out of the blood, and there will be blood. And it is the fulfillment. And then Jehu made a decree. And he said, Send word to all those who wish to be my servants. There are 70 sons of Achab. 70 sons he had. Bring them to me, their heads in a basket. And they went, and they all killed the 70 sons of, Je of Achab. They put their heads in baskets, and they delivered the heads of the 70 sons to Jehu. And St. John Christendom says, This is because of sin of Jezebel, for she was worse than Achab. And God punished Achab with a lesser punishment, and therefore know this, O you, men of, o you men of the world, that all do not receive the same punishment. All do not receive the same grace, and all do not receive the same punishment. For those that have participated in the wickedness and united their wickedness with others, they shall receive a much greater punishment. This is one of the reasons why the devil makes it so important for modern girls that they learn to dress like prostitutes at an early age. It is so important that you ladies learn to dress in bikinis, that you ladies learn about sex, and that you learn how to be impure, and you learn how to travel through the world and deceive men, and you learn how to bring souls into hell from the earliest age. And this way you are trained in wickedness. And then these girls grow up wicked. They grow up knowing how to seduce men. They grow up knowing how to be wicked. And they shall receive the punishment of Jezebel, the head remains, the hand remains, the feet remain, but all the rest is gone. The whole insides of the mother are gone because she has given herself over to blood and she shall be eaten up like the dogs, by the dogs, and buried in the field of Jezreel. This is the world that has come upon us. The wickedness of woman has surpassed the wickedness of man. Just like the wickedness of Jezebel, a far surpassed the wickedness of Achab, and therefore St. John Christendom says, God punished Achab, but he reserved a special punishment for Jezebel. He reserved a greater punishment for her. And so it shall be. And he says, look at this, who brings in the punishment, says St. John Christendom? Do you think that God lets others punish? Behold, God punishes himself. Who was it that brought the water from heaven to bring the great deluge and the flood to kill all men except for those eight on the ark? Who was it that sent the waters to destroy the, the, the Egyptians as they were crossing the Red Sea? And who killed 70,000 Jews by the pestilence because of one sin of David? Remember when David was an old man, David became proud. David had a count of all the people in his kingdom to see how great it was. And when he made the great count of his kingdom and was proud of himself, God came to David and said, You have been proud and you think this is your kingdom. This is not your kingdom. 
Therefore I will slay the people because of your sin. And 70,000 were killed by God because of David's sin. St. John Chrysostom mentioned specifically that in this sermon today. Do not think that God does not count our sins, and do not think that they shall go excused, and do not think also that our sins are alone. No sin is alone. No sin stays inside of ourselves. Every sin reaches out, and it affects others. Our sins, which we think we do alone, in fact, reach to others, and our sins that we think we do with only a few witnesses reach out to the world and they have everlasting consequences. One example came to me about within the last 10 years. A man who came back to the Catholic faith. He came back to the Catholic faith. He was raised a non-Catholic. Why was he raised non-Catholic? And all of his 50 cousins were raised non-Catholic? Because in 1920... When his father came over from Germany to the United States, he dressed as they dress when they go to church on Sunday. In, those, in, in the older northern Germany, they wore a special, uh, a special red suit and with special tassels and a special hat that they don't wear over here back at that time. And he went into church on that Sunday. And when he walked into the church, his first Sunday here in New York, he walked into the church, and he went to the German church, and he walked in, and the people saw him, and they said, we don't wear that here, and they laughed, and they mocked him. He walked out of the church, never to walk in again. He raised all of his children Protestant. They were raised outside the church, and they all were, were, they were originally baptized and raised outside the church, and finally one of the grandchildren was the only one that returned to the Catholic faith. And the other 50, 60, or 70 all raised outside the church because of one sin. One sin. His pride was hurt. Therefore he walked away. The other sin that helped him to commit that sin which was the mockery of the people. And these sins reach out to this day. And there are so many choices that we make in life that we don't recognize the consequences of those choices. What about all those abortions? What about all those dead babies? Remember the famous story of Padre Pio who had a girl come to confession to him. And when she went to confession to him, she confessed all of her sins sometime in the 1950s or 1960s. And she said to him, he said to her, did you remember all your sins? says, I think I did. No, you didn't. Because when you were a very young girl, you conceived a baby too early. And you were embarrassed when you got married. Therefore, you aborted that baby. Let me tell you about that baby, says Padre Pio to the lady. It was going to be a boy. The boy was going to become a priest. The priest was going to be a bishop. The bishop was going to be a cardinal. That cardinal was going to be elected pope. That pope was going to reform the Catholic Church. He was never born. And this is only one abortion that we know of because of the saints. There are millions and millions of others. Our sins are not alone. How many souls would have been saved if only one child had come into the world? Like the great example in the past of the, the uh, blessed Margaret of Castello, who would have been surely aborted in our times. But Margaret of Castello saved so many souls and performed so many miracles, sometimes 20, 30, 50 miracles every day, converting souls back to God and back to God and back to God. She was born crippled. She was born blind. She was born with a hunchback. She died at the age of 33, and she was a midget. She would have been aborted for sure in our times, but how many thousands of souls she saved during her 33 years on this earth. And then also, says St. John Chrysostom, there are sins of individuals, and there are sins of nations. And notice that it says in sacred scripture, Always God comes down and He speaks to the prophets and He says, Behold, Israel has sinned. He never says, There's a bunch of bad Israelites. 
But there's a few good ones as well. He simply said, Israel has sinned, the whole of Israel, and Israel shall be punished. And Israel shall be driven into exile, and Israel shall be crushed by the enemies who are raised up by the hand of God. Israel. There are sins of nations. Sins of our nation are filling up. And the only way to repair these sins, we must beg forgiveness for the sins of our own people. Right now, for instance, the United States is guilty for the murder of so many innocent souls throughout the world. We are slaughtering them everywhere in the name of democracy. And we cannot claim innocence for the sins of our nation. We must beg forgiveness. And there is a spirits that move behind. And these spirits are the spirits of hell who are moving our nation and moving the nations of the world and moving the families and moving the Catholic Church, the neo-modernist Catholic Church and moving all of the Protestants as well as all the other enemies of God. They are moving them towards a, a new unity which will 